It's a great privilege to be here. I really, uh, this, this, the discussion this morning was, 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 was magnificent. Uh, Jesus, I, I just, you know, uh, you did such a good job of laying out the, the, the true essence of, of economics methodology. I'm sorry that I didn't bring a lot of technical models to follow. I should have. Um, let, let me say, to be part of that, to follow on the discussion that I, I, I it, <laughs> The privilege of being here consists in that, in that, that certainly uh, the question, the great question is how should, what, what is a good way for people to live together in a good society? That is the question of, of, of Catholic social thought, of, 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 of the essence of what uh, any great religion is dealing with and it is certainly the question that economists are dealing with. It is where we start. Uh, we do make methodological assumptions that are particular to, to the, the approach that we, gets called economics. I think because I think in economics we're trying to, I like the, the, we're the, the kids, the kids who, uh, who, who make trouble for, for telling you it, it, it ain't as good as you think. Um, I think to me the essence of what economics is, is about is we're trying to develop methods of analysis for scrutinizing proposals on social and institu on institutional reform, on how to restructure the institutions of society. Uh, and for that, uh, to scrutinize the potential flaws or, or difficulties of institutions that perhaps don't yet exist if, uh, if we're thinking about reforms. Um, it helps in our particular um, Well, let me say. Let me say first of all, I'll say on, on preferences, I think the truth is we do start with welfare because we can't talk about uh, what is a good society without talking about what is good. And so, it, yes, we must start with, with 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 human welfare. We tend to because I think we t tend to start with an individualistic focus on human welfare, which is n not necessarily truth. That human welfare consists also of our relationships, but economists are n notorious for focusing on welfare as being individualistic. I think perhaps as a correction to probably some of the greatest problems uh, in social theory have come from people imposing a collectivist view on what is welfare and then individuals who don't uh, conform to whatever the the, the uh, uh, avowed collective goal is uh, 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 become be, be, uh, uh, become mis have been have been mistreated in, in, in the history of the world. So I think there's a sense of we should make our we're trying to make our, our concept of welfare based on individual welfare, and then if individuals are not themselves pursuing uh, the the maximization of their own welfare, then what's all this, you know that. That's certainly true. Uh, I make as many. I think well of myself, and I make a lot of mistakes in my own life. Uh, I think, uh, but in our analysis of institutions, it helps to assume that individuals are pursuing their own welfare. Uh, it's the the interaction, the, so that we can focus on the problems that come out of interactions. I think we start with a selfish materialism focus in our traditional assumptions, out of a kind of pessimism uh, that uh, the, the the converse is is. I, uh, a theory articulated by Plato in the Republic where he suggests that all power should be given to some people who are trained to love justice. Uh, I think economists do bring a methodology of suspicion. We don't want to assume that even those people who we put in high power are basically motivated only by their individual selfishness. I don't think that's true. I think uh, everyone I know uh, is 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 motivated lar not just by selfish motivations, but by 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 caring about all individuals. And I think pe politicians who I've known and people in high power, to the extent that I've known them, seem to be at least as good as the rest of us in that. Uh, but I think we want to um, we we want we, as 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 as. Um, as James Madison said, said uh, in the Federalists, that that if, if if all men were angels, we wouldn't need to, to to work so hard on on designing institutions. So we want to design our institutions under a pessimistic assumption of of, of selfish materialism. Uh, but I understand. I, I want to talk talk today, this is a conference focusing on development questions, and there is no better no better place to focus on the questions of what makes a good society uh, to increase the welfares of, of people than to question the questions of development. And I do want to focus on 
in, 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 in the time I have on what, based on everything I understand about models and everything I understand from applying economics methodology, what seems to me to be of the essence of the matter, what seems to be to be more important than anything else to say in such, such an a, a, a incredible forum uh, when one has uh, of the order of 20 minutes to, to talk about it. Um, and, and I think I should say, as an economist, I think of the essence of the matter is, is leadership, uh, the paper uh, that, that, that I gave to Mary to talk about uh, to, uh, to, as the text um, has a substantial section where I talk about the ecology of leadership, the development of leadership in our society. And I want to say also because it resonates with things that, that Cardinal George was saying today that, that, that I understand although I start from a selfish materialist perspective of, on, as a methodological assumption about humanity, not because I believe it to be true about how, what motivates people, but because I believe it to be a very fruitful assumption for much of our analysis. Um, that the paper, I think, quotes uh, uh, an ancient classic of social theory by Xenophon, The Education of Cyrus, in which he is probing the foundations of great social institutions and ultimately says that they, they depend on leadership. And where does leadership come from? And Xenophon suggests what is in English translated as the word gratitude, as being of the essence of the matter, and a reputation for generously rewarding good service and for expressing gratitude for those who have supported you is, is something which anyone who would establish a firm or a, or a political faction uh, and organize the great institutions of society, that, that is the, one of the first attributes that they need. And I understand that as an economist. Uh, I have to derive it by repeated game and models because uh, I can't assume it, but anyway. Um, I, I was very inspired last night to hear, I hope this is an accurate quote from, from, from Cardinal Turkson, uh, who so said, we cannot have successful globalization without first having successful localization. Without, and, and that is, is to me the theme that I want to be, begin with. Um, and, and my understanding of the, the political, the empowerment of people throughout the world depends on their having leaders competing to serve them. Um, to me, an instructive point for beginning is, 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 is uh, to understand the different histories of, of, of countries uh, in, in, in development, in, in, in poor countries, in, in Africa in particular. Uh, I take from a couple of books by Olaf Femi Vagan, a, 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 snap, a brief snapshot of, of, of the post-colonial histories of Nigeria, a country which, with, in spite of great resources, has, has, has had such disappointing uh, development. Uh, and, and Botswana, which, which, which has, has been, the, through most of its post-colonial period, the great success of, 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 of development in Africa. And in, in t without being an expert and without telling the whole story, I think there's nothing more telling than the following snippet. That shortly after independence, when, when Nigeria became independent in 1960, there, about a decade before, the British had created uh, local, locally elected councils, um, and they also had at the re power was at the regional level, not at the national level. There were, there were three then three regions in Nigeria, uh, so the, there were elected councils at the at the no local, national, and federal level. But the main power was at the regional level at the time that uh, the Nigeria became independent. And I think the first social sin in the history of Nigeria was that the the first elected uh, le leaderships at the regional level, which is where the real power was, turned around and suppressed the the local locally elected councils. They said, now all local administration is going to be done by by people appointed by the uh, the government of the region. The the majority, of the the government, the p politicians who got the majority of the votes in the region are going to govern are going to appoint the administrators everywhere. Uh, but the first elected government in Botswana, in, uh, when it became independent a few years later, actually acted to create locally elected councils where none had existed before. Um, my thesis is that the relationship between local and, and national politics is vital for economic and political development. And I will argue, I will want to suggest very strongly, that local democracy may be severely undersupplied in much of the world. Democracy is spreading, uh, and in some countries, it's, there, it's only at the national level. People elect a national leader. Um, I want to argue that democratic development must begin by increasing 
the supply of, le of leaders who have reputations for using public funds responsibly to provide public services, not merely to give jobs to their, to their active supporters. So, so I want to say that, uh, that, that that credo at the bottom, development economists talk about, uh, about uh, increasing the supply of something, but I want to increase the supply of steel mills, increasing the supply of human capital. I want to talk about social capital, and in particular, just the supply of, of, of politicians who have reputations for actually spending public funds to provide some public service. Local democracy, I want to, as a part of a system of federal democracy, can help to increase this national this, this supply of democratic leadership. I believe that when people see that democracy evolved organically in, in say, the United States, and, and it needs time in, in other countries, I think what, what what one wants to hurry time, and I think the fact that a democracy started locally in the United States is absolutely the essence of the matter. But I, I want to argue, uh, to put everything on the first slide, that established national leaders uh, may have a vested interest in limiting uh, this supply. After all, now he, I'm speaking as an economist, uh, bringing up ideas that are well known in other areas of competition. We don't just study commodities, we study competition in social systems. And, uh, and, and we understand that the suppliers of anything don't really want to have competition from others who supply it. And that a competitive system is good. That's the theory of democracy. So the theory of democracy says you need uh, that, that, that your leaders should compete with other potential leaders to see who can provide the best public services for us uh, for, the, for the least tax, tax input. Um, but those who are actually in the business of supplying it would actually prefer not to have so much competition. Okay. Um, I'll say at least a little bit about, about history and, and I think if, if we look in history we may find uh, that much of the problems of development of the world are, are rooted in, in feudal solutions to the, the problem of allocating local power. And, and one beautiful paper I simply want to mention is this 2005 American Economic Review paper by uh, Abhishek Banerjee and Lakshmi Iyer, uh, which is a new classic in, 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 in the development literature, I think, um, who the study the, in parts of India, in about a quarter of, a quarter of India, the British used a feudal system to collect uh, the local land tax. They, would, they gave hereditary property rights to ind specific individuals uh, over, to, to collect taxes and to, 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 um, to keep order in their communities. Uh, they did this, the British did this in the early period of, the, of, 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 colon, of, of, of colonization. And also, tellingly, after the 1857 mutiny, when, when there was some concern about uh, the stability of British rule in India, they went back to uh, districts that came under direct British rule during that period also got this feudal zamindar system. The feudal local lords were called zamindars. Um, 50 years after independence, more than five decades after independence, Banerjee and Iyer could still find lower agricultural yields and higher infant mortality in the districts where the British colonial regime used feudal, gave feudal power to these local lords uh, uh, as a way of exercising control. I think the point I want to make is there are two sides of it. That, 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 that in the early 19th century, there were British imperial reformers who argued that giving all this, the, the, creating these these local 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 lords was inefficient because the, the, the profits they were getting were 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 were, were uh, a cost both to the people of India and to the uh, imperial treasury. So it was it was economically inefficient, but it was politically very stable. So if you wanted to get control of a of a large area of a, a large land mass. Uh, in a hurry, uh, the easiest way to do it would be to appoint somebody. Who would you want to appoint? You want to appoint somebody who has some ability to, uh, some, some others who will follow him around in, in, in the village, in, the, in his community, some people who, who he can mobilize. But you wouldn't necessarily pick the number one person because you want somebody who, who knows that if this if this regime falls, uh, he's not going to be the bo local boss anymore. So by, the, the, the local Zamindars became a class of local leaders with a vested interest in the regime. 
I note that, by the way, I think an another form of local governance in the past, uh, uh, in a book by The Remembered Village by Srinivas, he tells a story about before the, in, in the colonial period when, when a car dr would drive up to the village, all the villagers would disappear because they were afraid of, uh, uh, of being, being brought off to do corvée labor somewhere, being drafted for, for forced labor. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and only the headman would be there to, to, to meet the outsiders. In some sense, the trusted local leaders might uh, serve to, to defend against the outside world in traditional forms of, of, organization, of, of politi local political organization, not to build a framework for profitably trading with it, which is, of course, of the essence of the matter uh, to, to, for, for a community today to, part, to participate in the benefits of, of globalization. Um, so let me say, in particular, that I think a key constitutional question, I, I, the slide title here says how governors are chosen. I want to be more general than that. How local magistrates at any level are chosen, mayors uh, and governors. Um, let me just use the word governor for short. That, that, that um, political systems differ crucially on whether governors and other local magistrates are centrally appointed or locally elected. That, to me, is the first question. After, if, if a country is democratic, that's hugely important. But beyond democracy, beyond parliamentary and versus presidential even, I think a huge question is about, whether, about to what extent are local administrators who are the crucial leaders in exercising state power in a, re, in, 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 in a, in a, in a region, in a larger region or a smaller region, depending on the level. These people are crucial intermediaries. Uh, they, much of, of, of the benefits of, 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 uh, of, of, of good governance are local public goods that need to be provided. Pro property rights are, are largely protected by local action, by local policing, and local justice. Uh, trade on a larger scale and, and, and trade and networks are, are, uh, have to be require, may require also national protection. But the, 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 the prerequisites of prosperity that, 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 depend, that are public goods uh, are some local, some, some, some national. And uh, in every country, in every society uh, throughout history, uh, st states, have had to exercise power locally through uh, through uh, uh, through administrations that have local leaders who then have enormous amount of local power. Agency theory in economics tells us that any powerful agency, any powerful agent who has opportunities, such as a, if you become governor of a, of a province or mayor of, of a town, uh, you have opportunities to use your your power over the administration, over the, the, of the, of the, the over the state administration in this re, in this in this in this district, to uh, benefit yourself and your friends. Um, so agency tells us that such powerful offices must have large moral hazard rents. That uh, that that. Um, serving in such offices has serving well in such offices has to be rewarding, uh, uh, because otherwise the temptations to abuse power may, are too great. When governors are centrally appointed, these offices become valuable patronage prizes that national leaders offer to key supporters. Uh, we created uh, in, in Afghanistan a centralized democracy. We, the president of, 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 the, of the state that, that the United States is sponsoring there uh, it was, was, was elected the first time I think there was a genuine democratic election. The second time I don't know how, how well the ballots were counted. But, he, but, but President Karzai certainly won a president, at least one presidential election fair and square. But uh, the local administration has been uh, supervised by people who he appoints and uh, they, they and uh, it's inevitable when that happens that uh, the president is going to use these valuable offices to uh, reward people who, in the national political process, put him in power, help to keep him in power. And once put in power, uh, these leaders cannot easily disappoint their supporters' hope for, for, to, for get earning rewards out of, uh, 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 out of such, such offices. Um, when governors are locally elected, the move to centralize, uh, so, so on the one hand, it's very difficult. So I want to argue that, that either constitutional can, system can be self-sustaining. When, when governors are, are, are centrally appointed, anybody who's, who's running for national office is implicitly promising those offices 
those, those positions implicitly or explicitly to some of his most important supporters. And, a, and moving towards devolution of power becomes very difficult because it means cheating some of the people who worked for you that they're not going to get appointed to the, 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 power, the, the offices uh, that, that, that they thought they were, 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 were in line to get if, by, by supporting you for president are now no longer uh, going to be in your, in your, in your, in your jurisdiction. Uh, where governors are locally elected, of course, and mayors are locally elected, a move to the mayors and governors are, of course, some of the most important people, in uh, the important power brokers that any national leader needs to uh, mobilize a national coalition to win power, and, uh, and a threat to, uh, uh, to a move to centralize those offices um, uh, would, would be threatening the positions of, those, of, the, of these local power brokers. So democratic decentralization is very stable. Uh, I have to say, and I've got uh, Vladimir Putin's name here, because in, 19, in 2004, remarkably, uh, the, lead, the, pres, the, pre, the, the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, did succeed in doing just what I said can't be done. Uh, he, meant, he, he converted all the elected governors into appointees of the president. And apparently, I, I, so I have, to, I have to say, whatever, whatever you think of him, his ability to convince uh, almost 200 uh, most of, 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 I think it's like 180 governors, uh, of, uh, of provincial governors, 160 or 100 governors, that um, that uh, that they could trust him to take care of their, their 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 the future of their political careers better than they could trust their own voters. Uh, says something about the kind of loyalty that he was building, uh, but it's unusual. Um, the. <coughs> The centralization of offices of, uh, is, creates agency problems that I, that I want to at least try to describe. Um, communities need trusted leaders to organize the provision of local public goods. Because free economists understand free rider problem. Public goods are public goods. They benefit everyone. If we build the roads and and and, and the 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 the, uh, the water network, everyone can then can then cheaply benefit from them. Um, Free rider problems limit the voluntary provision of uh, contributions to, 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 to pay for local public goods, even in poor communities that desperately need uh, uh, local, local investment. Um, with central appointment, when the state abrogates to itself, when the central leadership abrogates to itself, the, the, uh, the power to appoint local leaders, uh, local officials obviously de de depend primarily on their relationship with the president, let's say, with the national leadership for their, their careers, for their position, and for their hopes for advancement. Now, the president, I think, may well want to have his local magistrates build good roads and schools for the people and help make his country more prosperous. That's, I think that's probably true of most presidents who, as I say, I think are at least as benevolent as, as, as I don't know a lot of presidents, but I, I'm sure I would think well of, 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 of most of them. Um, but in economics, we focus on agency rents. Inf people who have the information have the power. The question of have these roads actually been built? Can anybody actually travel on them? Is, is this school adequate? Uh, is the teacher actually showing up to, to the public school teacher actually showing up to teach? Uh, are those questions? It's the locals who are served who who, who have the information. So the only way to, uh, to 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 give the maximal incentives to produce the local public goods is to allow. That the, the, the testimony from the uh, people served becomes important uh, in their careers, and even with central appointment, uh, that that can be politically manipulated. Uh, the, 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 there's some so, so the distribution of power away from the center. The center needs to main, the, let me let me say the centerpiece of of uh, what I said about gratitude and leadership. I believe that all of the great institutions of civilization, uh, economic. Uh, political, religious, th depend on people organizing them who are leaders and that the first thing a leader needs, regardless of, of what the organization is up to, is a reputation for reliably rewarding good service. And if the president doesn't, you know, starts letting the uh, um, uh, 
local testimony determine whether a mayor or governor gets promoted, um, that president is, is putting his reputation for reliably promoting them for good service, he's putting that, that into the hands of people who he doesn't know and, and uh, in some sense he can't necessarily trust. Sometimes those, 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 the, the, those letters might, those, 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 those complaints might be genuine, sometimes they might be uh, planted by political opponents. So the attempt to maintain central control uh, inevitably de degrades the, the provision of public services. I have to say, I really I want to point out this, this Fortman report from 1983 is, is, a, is a reference in my paper that's uh, it, truly a remarkable uh, study and, and, I, and I think a future class, a, cla a forgotten classic of development economics. Um, centralization can degrade public services and weaken the state outside the capital. Uh, in, in Robert Bates's book, When Things Fell Apart, I think this is the central stylized fact of his, uh, um, this is the last line, that, uh, line there, that the, the, in Bates's description of, I'm sorry, in Bates's description of, of the decline of, 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 of the post-colonial state uh, in, 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 uh, in much of Africa. Uh, there was an increasing centralization of power and uh, of uh, uh, using Offices outside, far from the capital, as being the, the administrative heads outside of the capital, uh, were, were given less and less reason to want to uh, to actually provide local public services. Um, because I'm a Chicago economist, I have to address the Kosian critique, which is uh, the, 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 which, the, the, why is why can't we have more? If if you're the leader of a country. Uh, ultimately, your, why can't you want to, the, what's best for the prosperity of your country, no matter what, because after all, um, in theory, uh, anything that increases the tax base uh, uh, will, instead, it, it, discipline your, agent, your, your, govern, your appointed governors and agents to provide better public services, better road networks, better protection of property rights throughout, throughout your country, and the country will become more prosperous and you'll get more tax base and all that's good as opposed to letting them take the profits uh, uh, directly. The problem is to take the profits of corruption. The problem is in, in taxation is inefficient. The, 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 the inefficient taxation prevents that Kosian bargain for better local government or limits the validity of that Kosian argument. Uh, um, what I most want, centrally I want to say is, is that to build democracy, democratic leaders are needed. What is essential for the success of democracy is not just um, elections, but competition among candidates to serve the public interest. I have a model in the Quarterly Journal of Political Science in 2006, and where I build a little model where, where, where democracy is actually, the forms of democracy are actually operating this little imaginary country, but I can create an equilibrium where the, the, the elected leaders aren't any better than the worst corrupt uh, autocrat for life, and why is that? Because voters wouldn't reject a, co a corrupt incumbent unless they could expect better from another candidate. All you have to do is put some cost of transition or some fear that the, corrupt, the next guy might be even worse. Uh, and and you, uh, if you don't think that the, 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 the alternative to the, 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 the current leaders uh, would be, the, the, the people who are running for, for, to, co to compete with the current leaders in an election, would, if you don't believe that they would be better, then, uh, then you don't stick with the one you've got. So there's no reason for voters to mobilize to reject corrupt, corrupt uh, leaders, uh, in, a, in a, when even when democratic formalities are in place, unless there's some reputation, somebody else who's out of power, who actually has some credible reputation for doing better. Uh, and uh, out in established democracies, we have lots of people who have, at various levels, have run public budgets without stealing all the money and have actually provided public services. We have often, in the, the, the history of the American presidency, for example, uh, governors who were, were considered to have done well in their state become then our strong, uh, often anti-Washington candidates for president. Um, I want to argue that the supply of, of so, so the key to democratic development, as I said at the beginning, is to increase a the nation's supply of leaders who have good reputations for using public funds responsibly to provide public services and not just to give patronage jobs. Every, in every system, we expect leaders will, will give patronage jobs to some of their favorite supporters who help them to get in power. But to actually demand that the people who you get, get hire provide some public service, uh, that's what a democracy is meant to provide a competitive incentive for. Uh, that is the theory of democracy. What I want to argue is that this supply is best developed 
when democracy is applied not just at the national level but also at, at, provi at provincial and local levels so that different levels of government provide a ladder of democratic advancement, career advancement. People, some people, some of our, of, of our national leaders in the United States have been people who had careers basically from the start in Washington. They, they, their first th job might have been as a staff assistant to a congressman, and then a the cabinet secretary, then a senator, then a, then a president. Others started in local government, mayor, governor, and then, then so it's, I'm not saying that everybody has to come from local government, but local government creates new opportunities for for leaders to, to prove their, that, that they might do better than others at uh, spending public funds in the public interest. Uh, and poor countries are suffering from a scarcity of public goods, suffering from a scarcity of, of, of leaders who, will, who want to pay the costs with their supporters of demonstrating that they can provide better public service, even in countries that are democratic. Um, the economics term here, that that Democratic local government can make national politics more competitive, lowering barriers against entrance, uh, to barriers to entry in national politics. That that uh, one of the key ideas in this in the in the in the economic theory of, of imperfectly competitive markets is that the level of profit taking that firms that are, that oligopolistic firms can take from their market to, may depend not on whether there are two firms or four firms in the market, but how easy is it for other outsiders to come in? Because any small number of firms could, could reach an understanding to collude in favor of higher profits. Taking that simple idea and applying it in politics, we, it's very natural to say that, that the, uh, the level of corrupt profit taking that our leaders can take in any given country may depend on not whether there's one party or two parties, but on how easy is it for new leadership to come in if however many parties we have in the capital start to collude uh, to, uh, um, to, 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 to make government more fun for themselves and less fun for the rest of us. Uh, and local government gives people an opportunity. It's, it's very easy for anybody to stand on a soapbox and promise to, to work for the people. In fact, all politicians do it. Uh, voters become naturally cynical. Uh, they want to see that you've actually done something. And, and uh, um, so let me say, having said that, uh, Democratic local government lowers barriers to entry into uh, national politics and thus makes national politics more competitive. I must say also that uh, conversely, national democracy uh, can strengthen local democratic competition. Uh, we in Chicago certainly know about local one-party uh, states, uh, that uh, one-party cities. Um, but uh, but the, but the the, the one party in, in that, that dominates Chicago, if its leaders don't provide good public service, they can't prevent uh, the, the 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 other party in, at the national level from actually uh, putting candidates on the ballot, and uh, and 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 the p potential of competition is what counts. So national parties can always support uh, alternatives to establish local bosses. I'm not arguing that local local democracy is 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 more virtuous than national democracy. I'm arguing that that each, each level augments competition in the other. So from that perspective, I want to argue that strong competitive democracy depends really on two political pillars, multi-party national assemblies, a multi-party national assembly at the national level, but also elected local councils share, sharing some, some uh, true responsibility. When you have, uh, in mo when you, uh, as I said, tax collection ability is quite limited in, in most poor countries, uh, and, the, and revenue sharing between national and, and local levels that even exists in the United States, obviously, and certainly is important in most countries of the world. Um, when you have political autonomy between the national leadership and autonomous local and regional governments, revenue sharing becomes of the essence of the matter, and so I do want to argue that political decentralization depends on that most centralized of institutions of government, the Ministry of Finance, uh, a, uh, bureau a finance bureaucracy that can reliably uh, uh, allocate funds between levels according to um, a, a clear rules is absolutely the essence of the matter also, but to me these are the pillars of a successful democratic system. Let me finish. By, 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 by summarizing the, from this perspective, what, what are the applied policy prescriptions um, for, uh, from this perspective for foreign development assistance? I, I take, there, there are humanitarian emergencies, and, and in fact, 
everyone uh, says, uh, and I have no reason not to believe, that uh, the that, that development assist that assistance in humanitarian emergencies is something that the, that the, the, the great N uh, NGOs of the world and, the, and, 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 for and development assistance government assistance of the world do pretty, do pretty well. A lot of lives have been saved. Uh, but I believe, as a social theorist, as a social scientist, that uh, the poverty of poor nations de depends on, 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 polit on a lack of, of, of provision of, of public goods and services uh, of, that, that, that ultimately depend on better require better governance. And if the goal is political development to better people, if we're trying to help people to, in, a kind of, in a poor country to get better, and part of that inv involves political development, then we should begin to think that the essential measure of any project's success is not how many roads and schools it builds, but how it enhances the reputations of political leaders who direct it, indigenous political leaders. Outputs of public goods count only towards this political end. So public services that, are, that par, foreign development assistants are paying for have to be directed by indigenous leaders. But that doesn't mean everything goes through the government, not through the central government at least. The, we're, if the goal is to develop people, the, 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 a, a, a poor nation's supply of leaders who have reputations for providing pub, public goods responsibly, for spending public funds responsibly on public goods and services, then foreign assistance can do this by, by providing direct assistance to provincial and local leaders, allowing, in fact, one could even allow that, that where there's a multi-party national assembly, that minority parties should be allowed to propose development projects to international development organizations. Um, the, now, the largest share, the, the goal is to build institutions, and the most important institution in any country is its national government. And so, of course, the largest share of development assistance can be, go to, to ministries of the national government, but conditional on some decentralization also to local public service agencies. And Paul Collier, I think, has made this argument very well. Foreign donors should require transparent public accounting for all of these funds, but not to the donors of the funds. That's secondary. What's most important is accounting to the people of the country we're trying to help so that they know what money did their leaders get in, 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 in fulfillment of what, to, to fulfill what promised public goods and services and the, then the people themselves should be able to judge whether their leaders have done this or not. And the goal is to create opportunities to, uh, to, for, for individuals in the country at the local, provincial, and national levels to begin to develop better reputations for, for providing public services with, that ultimately has to be based on tax money, but, but in an interim period could be based on foreign assistance. And that's, from this perspective, a redirection of foreign assistance programs.